Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for today's video. I am so excited to be announcing the very first video to our Christmas series. You heard that correctly. If you were here probably two years ago when I first did this, I feel like it was a really big hit. Everyone appreciated all of my videos and the hard work that I put into doing a video every single day. So I hope you guys come with the same energy this year. I am so excited. I wanna just show you guys how much I appreciate you guys. And the month of December is definitely my month to give back to you guys. I would not be in the position that I am if it wasn't for you guys and I always try to tell you throughout my videos and just in the comment section how much I appreciate every single one of you especially the ones that have followed me and have supported me throughout my entire nail journey that being said I am also going to be doing about 20 days of I am so excited also a little freaked out because that's gonna be a lot of packages that I'm gonna have to ship out so how to enter the most important thing before we get started into the video. As you know, this is gonna be 25 days of nails. So I want you guys to name the series. I kind of bounced back and forth with Sergio on a few different names, but I want you guys ultimately to be the ones that pick the name for the series. And the name that we end up going with is going to be the winner for the I will be announcing the and the winner in my next video, which will probably be tomorrow. So good luck to all of you guys. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Now let's get right into it. right into today's video we're gonna be starting off by doing my lovely friends nails she is actually my co-worker as well so if you guys are in the area and want to book an amazing nail artist definitely check her out I'll leave all her socials linked down below so you guys can follow her as well we're gonna be getting started by prepping her natural nail with a sanding band and mandrel bit from profiles backstage my e-file is from Kiara sky and it is at a speed of 4,000 rpms we're using very light pressure when it comes to buffing the shine off of her natural nail I'm gonna be focusing around that cuticle area and then just essentially buffing off the excess shine from her natural nail throughout the entire length of her nail I'm gonna be going in now with this cone bit that I found in my drawer. I have no idea where it came from, but I wanna say it's from one of my e-files that I received. I'm going in with this bit to essentially remove the excess dead skin from around that cuticle area. It can be a little hard to get all that removed with a mandrel bit since they are a lot thicker. And something thin like this is gonna help you get into those hard to reach areas. I'm just going in still at 4,000 RPMs, very light pressure on this process. It is a safety bit, so you don't have to be concerned about like cutting them or anything, but always remember to use light pressure and be extra careful. Now I'm going in with a cuticle bit still at 4,000 RPMs. This one is the cuticle bob bit from Profiles Backstage. It is my go-to for prep. I also buy some off of Amazon, so I'll leave both both of those links just to kind of give you guys options of two really good ones that I am absolutely obsessed with. I'm just going over that cuticle area to remove any excess dead skin without having to cut or trim anything off. Now she does have a little bit of length to her natural nail so I did go ahead and kindly ask her if she wanted me to remove it or not and she pretty much just said that I could do whatever but she typically trims them so that was my go ahead to cut them down and for this process I prefer to use a hand file this is a Tammy Taylor peel and stick file I just prefer to do this because sometimes I get scared that I'm gonna accidentally twitch and cut my client with the clippers I am probably the worst nail tech when it comes to like being fearful of sharp objects around my client's skin. So I just prefer to use the, you know, safer route and a hand file is definitely my safe zone. So I'm going to be going in with the hand file and just fouling back and forth until I get to the desired length 
that I want. Um, very simple process, just kind of going in um, back and forth, side to side. And don't quote me on this, but I feel like I read somewhere that it is definitely better to file using a hand file, at least on the natural nail. So that's what we're gonna stick with. I'm now going in with these non C curve tips from Not Polish. They are the coffin shaped ones. 10 out of 10, I do not recommend for coffin nails unless you want them super long. So these are absolutely pre shaped in coffin shape. However, for shorter length, as you can see, I'm trimming them down. They turn into more of a tapered square and I didn't realize this until I looked at them <laughs> at the length that we chose. So I would absolutely recommend using the universal tips from Not Polish. Those were always my go-to and I don't know why I stopped using them, but I definitely would have recommended these instead of the ones that I'm using for coffin nails, at least if you're gonna want a shorter nail. The universal ones are shaped in stilettos, so they're naturally a lot thinner. So when you cut them down, you can get a nice coffin shape. Now, I'm gonna be filing my life away because that is probably what took the longest when I was doing her nails. Because she wanted coffin nails, I went in with my hand file and I made sure that I thinned them out a little bit. I still left them slightly thicker than I would have wanted to make them. Um, but I feel like with her natural nail, this shape looked really good. So I hope she doesn't hate me for <laughs> kind of doing that. She did say I had free creativity on doing her nails. So I'm just gonna go with that. But we're gonna be going in with the Tammy Taylor peel and stick file once again, and just filing that, making sure that they are the shape that I want. And then we're gonna be going in to finishing her prep of her nail. Now that I'm done filing these a little, we're gonna be going in with the mandrel bit and sanding man once again. I now have it at about 6,000 RPMs and I'm going in and just roughly blending that tip into her natural nail. The reason why I'm doing this is because these are a little bit on the thicker side. So I wanna make sure that my acrylic lays on there a lot better than it would if I have that thickness on there. So definitely not necessary, but in some occasions I would definitely recommend doing this step. I'm gonna be going in with the acrylic primer from Kiara Sky. This has been my go-to recently, so definitely check it out if you guys are interested. But it's a little bit on the thicker side in comparison to regular primers, which throws everyone off, including myself, when you first use it. But just allow it to dry. Once you get done with the second hand, you should be good to go for application. I feel like if it's still a little bit runny, it's kind of weird whenever you go in with your acrylic. So I'm just applying a very thin layer of this on all of the natural nails and then we're gonna be going in with our acrylic application. Now getting right into the application, I'm using my Kiara Sky acrylic brush in a size 14, and along with that, for these beautiful glitter mylar chunks, it's gonna be called Holly Days 
from Profiles Backstage. It's such a pretty Mylar. It has like purple hues to it. Reason why I went with this color because I knew we were going to be going in with a purple color. And I'm just using clear acrylic to apply that so it sticks on there and it allows me to create an ombre. For the nude color, we are using Nude Panther from Not Polish. You guys already know it's one of my favorites. Definitely a go-to color. I feel like it matched really well with her natural nail. So we went with this color. I'm gonna be adding that to the cuticle area and blending it downwards towards the middle section just to create a little bit of an ombre into that chunky mylar glitter. Always remember to hold the finger down whenever you are applying that bead at the cuticle area. It's gonna help the product naturally flow downwards towards the tip instead of into her skin, which is what we want. We wanna avoid that acrylic flowing into her cuticles as that can ultimately cause lifting. I'm just gonna be going in right away and encapsulating her nail as well. I have to do this at the end anyways, so sometimes when I'm doing the application, I just go ahead and apply it so I don't have to worry about it later. Um, just kind of whatever I'm feeling in the moment. Sometimes I just wait till the end, but for this specific set, I decided to go in immediately with the clear on the nails that I needed to encapsulate since I was already doing the application. Now for this beautiful purple color, I am so excited to be doing like a pastel wintery type of vibe. I feel like purple is kind of slept on and it's such a pretty color. Instead of having to use blue, which is your typical like winter wonderland type of nail, purple is just like the equal beautiful girlier color of that. So I think it just looks a lot cuter in my opinion. I would definitely prefer purple over blue. And so this purple just gives what it needed to give. It is called Miss Mauve from Not Polish. It is one of my go-to lilac-y purples for the springtime and now definitely for the wintertime. We're gonna be applying that on some of the nails. I'm gonna be doing a French nail as well. But for this one, we're just gonna be doing a full nail of this beautiful purple color. And then for her middle finger, we're gonna be doing a full nail of Nude Panther. Again, my go-to, definitely recommend it. I'm just doing my basic acrylic application on this. I'm starting off with a medium-sized bead right at the middle of her nail, essentially where the tip meets her natural nail. And then we're going to be going in and just patting it, letting gravity flow down towards the tip. And I'm pretty much just tapping it into place. And then I do wipe the sides to make sure that that shape stays nice and crisp so I don't have to do too much filing at the end. And then I do, like once I'm done applying it, um, I'll drag it down, cut off any excess acrylic for the thickness that I want. And then I just continue to pat until the acrylic is nice and smooth. You don't have to do too, like a, too much patting, especially when you're using a really good product. The not polished acrylics, I talk about them all the time. And honestly speaking, like they are really freaking good. I think sometimes it gets a little bit hard to take me serious, but I 100% back them up. Their formula is amazing. They're super buttery, super blendable. And if you do get your hands on their products, you will definitely agree with me. So definitely recommend this one if you guys are starting out. It is a really good product to start with. I know it can be a little bit pricey for you know some people, but if you wanna invest and start off with really good products, this one is gonna be a definite plus. And of course, you can always use discount codes. I have one and Not Polish always offers discounts as well throughout their site. So make sure you guys check them out. I'm gonna be using that same acrylic on the nail bed and we're gonna be doing a smile line. I don't know why I decided to do this with acrylic. I feel like I was just trying to be extra, but in all reality, I could have just done the French how I typically do it, painted on the nail. So I'm gonna be painting over it anyways. But in hindsight, I do think it was a good choice and I'll show you guys that afterwards when I'm doing the nail art. But we are just doing that regular smile line, carving it out a little bit with a tip. I kind of just tuck it in until I'm content with that shape of it. And then we're gonna be filling in that cuticle area also and I'm making sure that I just wipe that cuticle area to make sure that we don't get any lifting, pat everything down into place. And then we're gonna be infilling the rest of the nail with that same lilac purple color.
And once I'm done with the acrylic application and everything is nice and dry, we're gonna be going in and filing. I'm using my 5 in 1 bit from Kiara Sky at a speed of 11,000 RPMs. I'm using the black one in medium grip. These are my go to bits for back filling, a finish filing, and just everything. Honestly, they are really good bits. And I feel like they last a pretty long time. So definitely recommend these. And I do also think, in my humble opinion, that they are very affordable in comparison to other bits. So we're gonna be going in around that cuticle area, filing it very gently, making sure that I pull back her skin and I am not getting my e-file caught on that skin. It can cause a little bit of a heat spike and sometimes you can even cut them. These are safety bits, so you will more than likely cause a heat spike instead of cutting them, but still it's painful and we do not wanna inflict any type of pain on our client. So definitely always remember to pull back that skin. I'm kind of simultaneously doing it with my pinky on one side and then my thumb on the other side, if you guys can kind of tell. Going in with my hand file once again, making sure that her shape is nice and perfect. And then we're gonna be squaring the tip off as well by flipping the hand around as I usually do. If you don't know what I'm talking about, definitely check out one of my videos where I'm showing the set of nails using a practice hand and you'll be able to see the entire process there. But unfortunately with my clients, for whatever reason, I always get out of frame and I need to figure out that angle so that I can show you guys. I'm going back in with my sanding man and madro bit now at a speed of about 8,000 RPMs. I'm gonna be kind of rough buffing her nail with this. I feel like it just kind of helps show any little areas that I may have missed when filing with my five in one bit and it just buffs everything nicely. And then I'm gonna be going in with my actual buffer and buffing the surface so that it ends up super, super smooth. Cause sometimes this can create like a little bit of a grit texture. So I wanna make sure that I smooth everything out nicely. Now I'm actually gonna be going in on the tip as well just to kind of remove any little plastic tip excess little areas. I know you guys know what I'm talking about if you guys do nails, but I'm just gonna go in and kind of just square off that while also removing the tip plastic pieces that are always left behind. Now going in with my buffer, this is the McCart buffer. I've been using this, I've had it in my desk for a while, so I'm gonna make sure that I make use of it. It is really, really good. Really recommend it. I've been using it in my past videos. So if you guys want a good buffer, this one's always a really good option as well. I'm going in with a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, removing all that excess dust from her nails, prepping for our nail art. We're gonna be doing tons of fun nail art, so I'm definitely really excited to get into that portion of it. I am going to be kind of working nail by nail. I don't do very well with like freestyle type of nails nowadays. My brain just doesn't function like that anymore. So we kind of were just going off of whatever the vibe we wanted to go with. We knew we wanted to do Christmas, 
so I ended up putting matte top coat on the nails that I knew that I was gonna be texturizing we're gonna be adding some textured nail art so I want to prep that nail so that I don't struggle afterwards I've definitely made the mistake of going right in with the nail art and not adding the base and it is not fun so I went ahead and put matte it from not polish as our base Went ahead and cured that for 60 seconds now i'm going in with our nail art this is a really pretty lavender liner from not polish so if you guys want really good lavender colors definitely recommend their line they are absolutely beautiful not to mention that i was definitely very excited that the purple matched really well with the one that i used for her actual acrylic set so we're going to be doing a sweater nail on the ring finger i am mix matching on the other hand so the other hand isn't the same but similar type of designs. I just switched them up a little bit and I don't even think I took a picture of the other hand so I don't know why I'm mentioning that. But just to let you guys know, on the other hand I did like the cable knit type of sweater design. On this one I'm gonna be doing hearts. So it's gonna be a little bit more girly. We're starting off with two lines down the sides and then I'm gonna be going in with our hearts down the center and then just simple little dots on the other side of the lines. So super simple type of sweater design you can do whatever type of design you want you could even do tiny little trees instead of hearts you can do little flowers you honestly can do whatever you want and then as long as you add the texture to it it is the perfect sweater now so for this again just applying hearts and then dots and then you want to make sure that it is wet i'm not putting this in the light yet I am making sure that as soon as I'm done with the nail art, I'm going to be pouring over that acrylic and I'm actually using the purple one on some of the nails and then on the ones that had like white and purple mixed, I just used clear. So you could use either or um, just depending on what else you're going to be doing on that nail. So for example, if I was going to be mix matching this nail with some purple hearts and some white hearts and then some white dots, some purple dots. I would just use clear to use as the texture instead of purple, otherwise the purple will contaminate that white. Pouring that acrylic over with that purple acrylic and then we're going to be placing that in the light once we are done. Now for the index finger I'm going to be doing textured also nail art but I didn't put two and two together on that one yet. Um, so I actually did the purple line. I didn't know what I wanted to add to it so to play it safe I went ahead and just cured it. So I did the smile line in purple and then I added the texture to it and then I cured it. Cause again, I had no idea what I wanted to do and I didn't want to mess it up. So I just played it safe by making sure that was secured on her nail. And then I went in with the rest of the design. So I decided to go in with some snowflakes, so that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'm using the white frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage. For these type of designs, I definitely really recommend that one. It's nice and thick, so it'll stay nice and put, especially for really thin lines that we're going to be trying to create. And then for the nail art brush, I'm using my Not Polish Liner brush. These are so good. The bristles are super, super thin. So it helps with tiny little details. So I definitely recommend these. They are a little bit on the pricier side in comparison to nail brushes that I typically use. So it is a little bit of a splurge and an investment, but I promise you it is 100% worth it. At least get one of them. They will last you a really long time. So you should be good to go as long as you're taking care of your brush. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of like star type of design as well in there and then we're gonna be adding some texture and then we're gonna be fully curing that in the light for another 60 seconds.
and we're gonna be going in with some 3d flowers I decided to make it a little bit more girly as well she also really likes flowers so I was like you know what why not we're gonna be adding this with the lavender color that we used miss mauve from not polish I honestly do definitely like to be transparent on my channel I would say not polish acrylics aren't the best for 3d nail art just because they are extremely blendable and they do such a good job about being blendable that they will naturally just blend out as soon as you try to add any type of texture to the petals or any 3d nail art that you're doing i'm not saying you can't do it because obviously i did it and i've done it before but i won't say it's the best so if you want a good 3d acrylic i would definitely recommend something a little bit more chalky um, a white is always really really good for that they tend to be more chalky but again the not polished brand isn't the best for this type of design so i would definitely recommend something along the lines of like profiles backstage or glam and glitz um, even young nails has some really good like thicker acrylics um, for 3d so if you guys are struggling with it try to use that and see if that helps so i'm just using my 3d brush from amazon this is my favorite go-to definitely recommend it i am absolutely obsessed with it i'm just continuously wiping my brush on my napkin so that i remove excess monomer from it the more monomer you have in your bristles the wetter the acrylic is going to get the less you're going to be able to put texture in it and the longer it's going to take to dry so i'm just kind of removing the excess to make sure that i speed up the process now we're going to be going in with more matte top coat because i ended up adding some texture on that nail as well and then i forgot to top coat to the 3d nail art one so here i was definitely complaining about that but i am just going in very carefully around those petals and then we're going to be placing that in the light for the pinky i'm going to be doing some more snowflakes same process we're going to be doing the snowflakes with the white and purple and then we're going to be adding the texture to it curing it in the light Now for the thumb, I ended up doing the kind of like really, really cute plaid type of design that I've done before on my channel. It's like crisscrossed and I feel like it's super, super dainty without being super plaid type of vibes. I'm going to be using the purple and white as well. And then I'm going to be matte top coating it and then adding some texture to the top as well. I'm going to let you guys kind of see this process. Camila woke up and she's crying, so I'm going to try to go get her and then we'll get back to it.
Now I'm just going to be cleaning off the surface of her nail, adding some cuticle oil, but that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton and I'll see you guys next time.